How was your goal number one is hobby from Weather SpongeBob? That was it today. It's March 21st, 2020. And I hope you guys are enjoying the beginning of spring as today. We're going to talk about the potentially major severe weather threat that could happen in the eastern half of the United States this week. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content. Make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post occasions if you want to see even more weather related content. So as we begin by taking a look at the GF, the latest GFS model run which gives a good idea of what the potential scenarios we're seeing with this next low pressure system that's going to move through the united states or should i say the second low pressure system that's going to move through the united states because first we're going to deal with this low pressure system that's going to form as a result of an area of unstable air right around the midwest right around oklahoma texas and kansas however the jet stream isn't dipping far south enough to really make it a severe weather threat as there isn't just there isn't enough instability to create uh, a lot of convection or at least very strong and potent convection in this region and strong enough updrafts to really create those powerful thunderstorms that would be considered severe status. However, it will dump some rain in the Midwest and then maybe some snow in the northern portions of the northern Midwest states. But that's about it. The main focus, however, will be this next whole pressure system that's going to move through the through the southeast and eventually will move further up northward to affect maybe the Great Lakes as well as the northeast later during the week. So if we take a look in the future, we do see that there's a large area of snow showers moving through the Rocky Mountain region and you see that um, behind it, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of cold air right behind it and it's cold enough to the point where it's bringing snow to New Mexico, to the panhandle of Oklahoma and Texas as well, so this could dump a little bit of snow for you guys, but um, so watch out if you're around the Panhandle of Texas and northern New Mexico, since there certainly is a chance of snow, and I'd say it's more likely than not you guys will experience snow based off of how cold it's going to be in the northern in northern New Mexico and how and um, by how close we are within the forecast range in. Um, with this storm but you see headed forward you see there's a lot of cold air behind this trough and as it and as it moves further south eastward it's going to encounter the very warm and humid air parcel that's located over the southeast and as it does that it's going to create an area where the lift is going to be very strong the air molecules are going to become buoyant as a result of the denser air molecules pretty much forcing the air molecules further upwards in the right around the Gulf states and as a result that humidity will eventually condense in the upper levels of the atmosphere and the temperature will be warm enough to support a lot of water vapor which will overall help the thunderstorm um, absorb a, um, at least um, release a lot of latent heat during condensation and that will create an, um, and that will create just a strong area of convection right around the Gulf Coast states especially through Texas Louisiana is involved in Alabama and Arkansas as well. However, what's interesting is that with the latest GFS model, it's taking a slightly weaker storm than it was during the last run. As during, if we take a look at the last run, which I I um, pointed out yesterday, it was quite a strong storm at 992 millibars and going down to the 980s and even 976 later during the run. However, that certainly isn't a, the case today as now the GFS model is more lenient on bringing a weaker storm up northward through the Great Lakes, um, the Ohio River Valley states and the northeast. However, it's still at least powerful enough to at least bring some severe weather to the southeast and maybe the northeast since there's still just enough unstable air for potentially some convection to occur right around the Ohio River Valley as far north as the Ohio River Valley state so you need to watch out for that although the storm might not be as powerful as forecast based off what the GFS model is saying the European is taking a completely different scenario which I'll talk about in just a second but let's say the GFS's model scenario was correct where it is a weaker storm at 996 millibars you still do not want to underestimate that because you don't really need a powerful low pressure system to create a potent severe weather threat and i want you guys to keep that in mind because there's still 
could be a severe web threat even with a weaker low pressure system and to show you guys this we're going to take a look at the surface space cape or CAPE which represents convective available potential energy and as the name suggests it pretty much means the potential energy there is in the atmosphere or at least along the surface to create a strong area of convection and it really gives a good idea of where the convection will occur and how much energy there really is along the surface in the atmosphere to induce thunderstorm activity and you see that for, as of right now for most of the united states you are in the clear as there isn't really any major air there isn't really any major or notable regions receiving a ton of convection we do see it just off the coast of florida but it's not affecting land so it's nothing to worry about in florida but if we move forward you're going to see that we do see a low convection right around the 48 hour mark as the low pressure the first low pressure system i mentioned will form right around the midwest the, this convection won't be strong enough to create anything severe most likely in the midwest uh, maybe a slight chance of severe weather um, however, the next, obviously the next old pressure system is the one we're worried about. And if we move forward, you're going to see that all of a sudden we do see a large area of convection and potential energy throughout Texas and Louisiana. And this is, wor and this is worrying, especially since um, portions of Texas just north of Houston are in the yellows when it comes to potential energy, where you guys are right around 2,500 joules per kilogram when it comes to the convective potential energy that would create those potent thunderstorms. And if we continue to move forward, you just see the, the convective potential energy moves further eastward and um, it affects Alabama, Mississippi, and um, as well as the panhandle of Florida. So this could definitely bring some severe weather to you guys. And even if we move further in the forecast, even further, this convective energy even sprawls further northward into the northeast. So although the low pressure system based off what the GFS model is um, is currently forecasted to be weaker than expected, it's still expected to bring uh, a, most likely a severe weather threat throughout the southeast, especially closer to Texas and Louisiana, where as at this point it seems like it's going to be worse in those areas. Um, right now, but that could definitely change depending on the trajectory of this storm and how much unstable air is really going to be right around the eastern half of the United States come during come the late week. So we just have to keep in mind that. However, let's now take a look at the European model because the Europe because unfortunately the European model is taking a much different scenario and. The reason why I say it's unfor unfortunate is for two reasons. For one thing is that the European model is forecasting a much more potent storm, which I think would bring a bigger threat more than just severe weather. It could bring even more flooding rain um, and also potentially a, a major wind threat. And maybe even the snowstorm is not out of the possibility with the European model scenario. If we take a look at the forecasted radar, from the European model, you're gonna see that the European model is taking a much more potent storm that would bring a lot more um, concerning impacts throughout the eastern half of the United States. There goes the first chop, as you could see, um, not really bringing much in terms of weather, but if we move on to the second chop, you see that there's some thunderstorm activity already developing through Louisiana and Texas, which is expected by both the GFS and the European model, which is the reason why I'm expecting these states to have at least some sort of severe weather as i'd say there is um the most um i'd say it's more certain than not you guys will experience severe weather through the southeast um however it gets interesting further and further into the run where you see the the european model not only takes rapidly develops this storm much faster and it's a more potent storm at down to 993 millibars but it's also taking a track well further to the west than what the gfs model is forecasting where the track where it's taking a low pressure trajectory um a little bit further to the east and the reason why that is 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 really all because of the orientation of the jet stream so, um, because since the European model is taking more of a pronounced jet stream dip, that means that the storm will be stronger and 
the storm will move further up northward a lot quicker since the jet stream dip is more pronounced and we're seeing more and on the eastern side of the jet stream we're seeing winds more come come more from the south which would steer the storm further up northward quicker and also make it a much more intense storm thanks to how thanks to how pronounced the jet stream dip is making that forcing that cold air to interact with that very warm Gulf of Mexico air. So as a result, the storm is much stronger in the European model. And we do see quite a potent snowstorm through Wisconsin and extending to Michigan, which is a complete, um, which is completely different in the year in the GFS model, where it's mainly taking a little bit of snow in Michigan, but I'd say it's nowhere near as much as what the European model is taking. And plus it's a much weaker storm. So the winds won't be as strong. Um, I'd say the tor the chances of a tornado are much smaller thanks to how weak this storm is because typically during strong storms, there's obviously strong wind shear since the upper level winds are very strong when there's a lot of unstable air and that could create tornadic activity and even more potent supercell thunderstorms and overall more precipitation. So I'd say the severe weather threat is a little bit um, it's a little bit better or at least a little um, is at least a little bit um, less potent than what the European model is forecasting. So um, however, they're um, however, they're both taking a severe weather threat in the southeast. So I'd so I'd at least say aware of it all throughout the east coast and even um, in the northeast, you need to at least pay close attention to this because it's and the Great Lakes now should pay close attention to this because they're, they're currently a low pressure system is a uh, formable low pressure system is expected um, by the European model where the storm is quite strong dropping down to 982 millibars and we could see the chance of snow depending on how much cold air is in located in the Midwest and on the eastern half of this storm there might be a severe weather threat depending on how far how far south that jet stream dips and how much that cold air really interacts with the eastern half of the storm they bring that severe weather along the east coast so we just need to wait and see um, however one thing i could say for certain is that most likely texas louisiana and mississippi and a lot of the states surrounding it should experience probably some sort of severe weather that um, how potent it will be it still remains to be seen however both the computer models are expecting it to be at least marginally or at least moderately um, potent when um, bringing a moderately potent severe weather threat to some of the southeast states so i currently expect that and prepare for it because it's better to be safe than sorry in those states um, it's better to be prepared well before the severe the potential severe weather threat comes and let's say you're unprepared by the time it comes so god just um so i'd say prepare just stay aware of this and pretty much all throughout the east coast and the great lakes needs to start watching this next old pressure system very closely because this could potentially be a major severe weather threat and potentially a major wind threat or snow event as well further up northward so if we take a look at the rainfall forecast over the next five days which is another major concern i have regarding this storm we do see that there's a large area right along the gulf coast of mississippi alabama and right around new orleans experiencing an air experiencing over five inches of snow which it, i mean rain um, which it could definitely cause flooding and it's definitely worrisome and while it does look lighter further up northward this only goes five days out and i'm currently forecasting things beyond five days out so there's still a lot of uncertainty um there's and also the forecast map doesn't go beyond five days out so i'd assume that this heavy rain will extend even further up northward so you guys need to pay close attention to this especially if you live nearby a river which could be high or at least close to overtopping its banks you need to pay close attention to this and uh, track of the storm really all depends on the position of jet stream and how much unstable air there is because if the jet stream dip is a little bit more pronounced the storm will move a little bit further westward and as a result the storm will be stronger and potentially we and we could potentially see a major snowstorm through the northern midwest states however if the jet stream dip is less pronounced um, then it's more likely to move in an easterly direction the severe 
weather threat would be less potent and we're less likely to see as major of a storm as what the European model is forecasting. So we just have to wait and see how much unstable air is going to be behind this second low pressure system and how far south that jet stream lives. But yeah, guys, um, let's take a look at my map so, um, regarding the severe weather risk. So I'm so um, keep in mind that if you're in the uncertain region, that means you're let that doesn't mean you're necessarily less likely to, to experience severe weather. Um, what really, if you're under the uncertain region, it really means that the forecast is more uncertain because you certainly could experience a severe weather threat. However, the forecast is less certain. So there's probably an equal chance that you might not experience a severe weather threat at all. However, if you're in the darker red and even in the lighter red, it's at least more certain you're going to experience some sort of severe weather from this next old pressure system. So keep a close eye on that and stay tuned to your local forecast over the next several days because we could potentially be in for another major severe weather threat with the risk of damaging winds, tornadoes, and hail. But anyways, guys, I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content. Make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather related content. I hope you guys have a good day.